Hi friends, my name is Stephanie Martin and I'm a teacher at Cyrie Elementary and I'm so excited to bring you this week's lessons because as I mentioned before, this is my absolute favorite topic to teach and it has to do with space. Now, May 30th, 2020 marked a historical day because it was the first time that we have launched from U.S. soil since 2011. Did you get a chance to watch it? If you didn't, check out the link that I have because I have linked that launch so that you can watch that from home. Now the rocket that was used to send Apollo to the moon in 1969 was the Saturn V, and it was designed with a three-part system. Each system contains its own fuel source, but the first stage houses the massive engines used to launch the rocket from the ground. There's the second and third stages as well, and at the tippy top was where the Apollo Air spacecraft sat, and this is where the astronauts were. The first launch created such force to cause a small earthquake felt around the continent. Imagine the intensity of the close-ups feeling. The rocket later changed due to budget cuts and a change in NASA's goals. The shuttle system was created and successfully used for the next 30 years. It was retired in 2011 with a renewed focus on humans traveling to the moon and beyond. Here you can see a comparison between the Saturn V and the space shuttle in size and their payload. SpaceX is a private organization run by CEO, founder, and chief engineer designer Elon Musk. They began in 2002 with the Starship, which was based off the early designs of the Saturn V. With technological advances, the SpaceX created the Falcon Heavy, or now known Falcon 9. Just this past weekend, they demonstrated their advancement of space travel with the launch of the Crew Dragon. This launch included just two astronauts, Hurley and Benkin. Hurley was on the last shuttle launch in 2011. The goal of this mission was to successfully launch and connect with the ISS, or International Space Station, where they'll spend the next several months. The ultimate goal for the future would be twofold. One is to launch them to the moon and then from the moon to Mars, where we will build a habitable structure. The second mission is to commercialize space travel for private citizens like you and I to orbit Earth. I personally can't wait for that day. Today, however, let's come back to Earth and let's take a look at something that you can create at home. So, though not fueled by a liquid propulsion, um, this one does require a force for thrust, and we're going to use the power of air. Now, you got to remember the lessons that you learned in the past regarding Newton's laws of motion. And first, I'm going to demonstrate to you with a commercial air rocket that was bought from Amazon. Um, but then I'm going to show you how you can make a paper rocket. All right, so here I have a rocket that you would probably buy from a store. I bought this off of Amazon. And this one is an air propulsion. Um, so what we have to do is we have to create pressure. And so you're going to need a pump. And this has the rockets that slide on top of your pole. And to be able to create that pressure, we're going to put a disc down inside which is gonna cap off where this air is filling. As we pump the air in, we're compressing the air until there is so much pressure that it cannot withstand anymore, and it's going to pop, and all of that air is going to create a, a force which is gonna launch this rocket. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now, and uh, hopefully we'll catch it on video. It's not always predictable as to when exactly it's going to launch. But let's give it a go. All right, friends, I'm going to show you how to make a paper rocket just using a few materials. So you're going to need some paper and scissors. You're going to need a pencil, a straw, this is just a straw that I got from the store, and some tape. So to begin with, I went ahead, this was a normal 11 and a half piece of paper and I've just cut off a portion of it so that I can use that for my thin and my cone. So you're going to take your pencil and you're going to roll the paper around your pencil so that you get a cone. And we'll drop the pencil out. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and tape this to secure it. Okay, and because there is multiple rolls, the air shouldn't travel out. But now I'm going to need to make a cone and fins. So on this end, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to use this roll of tape as my um, circle. I'm going to trace a circle and then I'm going to cut that circle out. Okay, so here I have my circle. Now to make my cone, I'm going to fold that in half and I'm going to fold it in half again, which is going to give me my center point. And based on my center point, I'm gonna go ahead and use my scissors and I'm just gonna cut on one of those lines just to the middle. So now I have this one cut. I'm gonna overlap and pull that in and you can make it as flat or as tight as you'd like and that's gonna be your cone. So I'm gonna add a little piece of tape to secure that. And I'm going to first, to make sure that no air comes out of here, I'm gonna go ahead and tape off this top and I'm going to cross it with another piece of tape just to make sure that you have a good seal on that top so that no air is coming out and then I'm going to add my cone and I'm just going to use a couple pieces of tape. Now you can decorate this if you'd like. There I have my cone, and I need to add some fins. So with my extra paper here, I'm just going to, you can do this two ways. You can either cut some rectangles and you can roll it to make some tubes, and you can tape your tubes around there, or you can cut triangles, and you can tape your triangles onto the side. So you decide. And I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back and show you how to launch. Okay, once you have your fins the way that you like it, and you can use markers and you can decorate it, then it's time to launch. So you're just going to slide it onto the end of your straw, and you're going to blow into the straw, and it will launch. Now, if you ended up making it a little bit too wide, like I did in this case, then either you're gonna have to roll it tighter or use a bigger straw. But my challenge to you is could you use a straw attached to a bottle or a Capri Sun or in some other way that would give you that same force of propulsion to launch your rocket?